the biggest blasts in the universe dwarf anything we can imagine on Earth. We're already billions of times beyond the entire nuclear arsenal of the world. Number six on our countdown are the flares that burst from incredibly magnetized neutron stars, known as magnetons. And one of the most powerful ever observed from Earth released as much energy in just over a tenth of a second as our sun does in about a hundred thousand years. The blast in 2004 came from a magnetar known as SGR 1806-20 and the constellation Sagittarius. It's about 50,000 light years away from Earth on the far side of the Milky Way. It was incredibly powerful. All that energy came in a tenth of a second. It blasted the detectors and satellites that happened to be flying around up there. In fact, it was the brightest blast ever seen from an object outside our solar system. And yet, it was 50,000 light years away. But what does brightness have to do with the power of a blast? So I'm standing in a dark room here, and now I'm going to turn on a light bulb. How bright that light bulb appears to me depends on two factors. It depends on how intrinsically powerful or luminous the light bulb is, its wattage, how much energy it puts out per second, and it also depends on the distance of the light bulb from me. When I'm close to the light bulb, I see that the light bulb is bright. If I move a factor of two farther away, then in fact it looks a factor of four fainter. That's the inverse square law of light. The power of the light bulb has remained the same, but by being twice as far away, I get only one fourth of the light reaching my face and my eyes. Astronomers measure the apparent brightness of the star or the explosion. They figure out its distance through some other technique, and from those two variables, they figure out the power or the luminosity of the source. That light is released, not just in visible wavelengths, but across the electromagnetic spectrum. And any time researchers detect gamma rays, like they do in magnetar flares, they know it must be a big blast. Gamma rays are a type of light, but a much more energetic light than we see with our eyes. So the spectrum of light that we're familiar with goes from very low energy and through the visible part of the spectrum, the light that we see, all the way out through X-rays into this extremely high energy component of light, which is called gamma rays. Even a one-tenth of a second short gamma ray flare, like SGR 1806-20, would still be able to fry the Earth with radiation from many light years away as long as the full force of the flare was aimed at Earth. But not all of the biggest blasts in the universe are over in a fraction of a second. Number five, the 100 million year blast. 2.6 billion light years away from Earth, a supermassive black hole billions of times the mass of our sun has been wreaking havoc in the center of a cluster of galaxies. Known as MSA 735, it's been shooting out two continuous jets of particles in opposite directions. Scientists believe the jets have been raging for the past hundred million years, punching two huge bubbles into the surrounding galaxies. MSO 735 really is the prototypical example of a black hole blowing bubbles. What we're seeing here is giant cavities being evacuated by these powerful jets. So they transport vast sums of energy down from the black hole out to huge distances, maybe about a million light years or so. A million light years is 10 times wider than our Milky Way galaxy, which means these jets are powerful enough to create two very big bubbles. The total energy within these two bubbles is stupendous. 
far exceeding any other amount of concentrated energy that we know of in the universe. However, it must be remembered that the energy was released over 100 million years. That means that per unit of time, the total amount of energy released wasn't all that big. Still, the jets are strong enough to shoot the particles out at millions of miles an hour, about a quarter of the speed of light. The jets and resulting bubbles only come from about 1% of the most massive black holes in the universe. That's because the forces near these monsters are so huge that instead of swallowing everything, they actually end up pushing some particles away. It's important to emphasize that these giant explosions are not the explosion of the black hole itself, but rather an ejection of particles from near the black hole, the vicinity of the black hole. By colliding with one another, they can, in some cases, be ejected out of the vicinity of the black hole. But how can this two-sided blast possibly keep going for 100 million years? It's all a matter of how much cosmic stuff is available, as planets and suns are stretched and ripped apart down to their very atoms and drawn towards the black hole. So these jets that we've estimated have been going on for about 100 million years still have a huge amount of fuel available to them. That process can go on for an extremely long time, hundreds of millions of years. Now, imagine taking a big chunk of that energy and releasing it in less than two seconds. That's what researchers believe happens in blast number four, short gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are more concentrated than magnetar flares. It's a concentrated beam of radiation, like a laser beam. It comes out as a narrow stream. The gamma rays in the beams are also traveling much faster than the particles coming out of black hole jets. The observations show that, that the energy is coming out in jets, moving at very close to the speed of light, 99.9999% the speed of light. At that mind-bending speed, in just a few tenths of a second, short gamma ray bursts can release as much energy as our sun does in millions of years. But for years, scientists couldn't figure out why some gamma ray bursts were long, lasting many seconds or even minutes, while others were usually only a fraction of a second. Then, one burst in 2005 led researchers to an exciting new theory about incredibly dense neutron stars annihilating each other. The power of man-made atomic bombs is nothing compared to the galaxy-rattling explosions in the cosmos. As we continue counting down 10 of the biggest blasts in the universe, these cataclysmic events are now producing as much energy as our sun does in millions of years. Short gamma ray bursts are number four. For years, scientists have been confident of the source of long gamma ray bursts, those that last over two seconds and sometimes erupt for many minutes. They come from galaxies with massive stars. And when certain massive stars die, they collapse and then explode, blasting out incredible amounts of energy as concentrated jets of gamma rays. But in 2005, detectors in space captured a powerful gamma ray burst that only lasted for a fraction of a second. This was very exciting because all the gamma ray bursts we'd seen before were of the different variety, longer, coming from galaxies where massive stars were dying. This was something different. It was short and it came from a region where no massive stars existed. 